And the Prophet وسلم, said that jihad is of many different levels and the highest of them is a truthful word in front of a tyrant oppressor. My brothers and sisters, today in the Euro News, they interviewed an Israeli soldier, an Israeli citizen woman. I call it the occupied Palestine. But just for identity purposes, we'll say Israel so you know who I'm talking about. And the Israeli soldier is packing his bag saying, this is now a fight between good and bad. Good and evil. The Israeli woman says the only innocent people in Gaza right now are the hostages, the Israeli hostages. Once they're out, everybody can be wiped out. Everybody can be killed. She's talking about the babies, the children, the innocent women and men, the civilians. All of them are just evil, worse than the shaitan to them. And she said, we are now the center of the world, meaning the whole world revolves around them. They are the kings and the lords of the world. This is exactly what Pharaoh said when he enslaved the children of Israel, whom they claim are their ancestors, even though they are not their ancestors. Only some of them, and there are others who have nothing to do with those who are in Israel, nothing to do with the Zionists. There are many different people, even of different religions, even among the Muslims who are from the children of Israel. They were dispersed and they got mixed, and now it's just a mixed salad. It's gone. But now it's about righteousness, justice, and oppression. Some of them have chosen to stay. Even if the borders were open, they choose not to leave. Some of the Muslim Gazans in there. Maybe even some of the Christians. They've chosen, this is our fate. We will die here if they kill us. Khalas. They've got nothing else to lose. They want to die with their dignity, with their deen, and with their honor. They don't see this world as anything. The hereafter is their paradise. So glad tidings to them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on those of them who have passed away and been killed. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make their children intercessors for them and waiting for them on the doors in Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them victory against their enemy. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep them steadfast and give them patience and perseverance. May Allah protect them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them safety. My brothers and sisters, we now are the ones who should make du'a for ourselves. They're making du'a for us. And I quote the ayah in the Qur'an where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said 1,400 years ago, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا تبلون في أموالكم وأنفسكم ولا تسمعون من الذين أوتوا الكتاب من قبلكم ومن الذين أشركوا أذى كثيرا وَإِن تَصْبِرُوا وَتَتَّقُوا فَإِنَّ ذَلِكَ مِنْ عَزْمِ الْأُمُورِ In Surah Ali Imran, verse 186, Allah says, O believers, you will certainly be put to test in respect of your properties and your lives. And you will certainly hear many hurtful things from those who were granted the book before you and those who have associated others with Allah in His divinity. If you remain patient and God-fearing, this indeed is a matter of great resolution. Brothers and sisters, victory, there is victory and there is success. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, whoever is saved from evil and in the hereafter is saved from the fire and enters paradise, faqad faz. That is the true success. This life is but a test and exam. My brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says in Surah Al-Ankabut, Alif Lam Mim Ahasib Al-Nasu An Yutraku An Yaqulu Amanna Wahum La يفتنون ولقد فتن الذين من قبلهم فلا يعلمن الله الذين صدقوا فلا يعلمن 
وَيَعْلَمُنَّ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ صَدَقُوا وَلَيَعْلَمَنَّ الْكَاذِبِينَ Allah says, do people think that we will be let, do people think that they will be let to go merely by saying we believe and that they will not be tested? For we indeed tested those who went before them. Allah will most certainly ascertain those who spoke the truth and those who lied. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts us through conflict sometimes, through hardships, through loss of wealth, loss of lives, fear. Sometimes we lose a little bit of wealth. Sometimes we have certain sicknesses. My brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, this is how to sift between who is righteous and who is not, who is patient and who is not, who deserves and who doesn't deserve the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says, مِنْكُمْ مَا يُرِيدُ الدُّنْيَا وَمِنْكُمْ مَا يُرِيدُ الْآخِرَةِ Some of you want this dunya, this temporary enjoying world, and others they want the akhirah. Brothers and sisters, but having said this, a Muslim does not give up. There is still hope, there is still a future, there is still things that are going to change. Nothing ever stays the same. The oppressor doesn't last very long. If for those of you who read about history and you educate yourselves and you learn about the history of civilization, you will know how no oppressive civilization stayed. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he repeats history. And there are those who stay and others who replace them. The Zionists today and the uh, people who support this oppression, of course, not all Jews are like this, brothers and sisters, not all Christians, not all non-Muslims, not all people of the world who uh, you know, support all of this oppression. And I'm going to quote something marvelous, insha'Allah. However, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us that every century, every 100 years, at the beginning of every century, Allah will send to this ummah, to this nation, someone who will reform them, a reformer. The hadith is in Abi Dawood and other hadith similar to that. What is this reformer? This is hope from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that every 100 years, uh, an enlightenment, a new beginning, a reformation will be sent to this world, especially to the nation, the ummah of the Muslims. Allahu a'lam in what way this reformer will come. Is it a human being? Is it a man? Is it a woman? Is it a movement? Is it a group? Or is it something else? Is it an event? The point is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every century does not leave the world it, the way it is. And whatever is unjust, it will calibrate. Perhaps what is happening now, even though brothers and sisters, atrocities and oppression are actually everywhere in the world happening every day. There isn't a place except that we do not, you know, except that we don't see it in the media. What is happening now in Palestine, brothers and sisters, no matter how bad it looks, it is a stepping stone to something else. Mark my words. And the Prophet told us 1,400 years ago that the signs of the last hour will appear in the following way. He gave us a visual example. What was it? He said, they are like the stones inside of a bead, or the beads, sorry, inside of a string. You know the beads? It's got little stones in it. If you cut the string, the beads start coming out, but the next bead won't come out until the first bead comes out. So one bead comes out, the next one follows, the third one follows, the fourth one follows. But the fourth and the fifth won't follow until the one before it comes out. So he said, the signs of the last hour will come, the signs of the last hour will come one by one like the way the beads come out of a string. What does that mean? It means that what you're seeing right now, you're going to say, in fact in the hadith it also says this, Rasul did say, everyone will say, this is it, this is it, this is it. This is the end, this is the one, whatever it is. But it's merely another bead that is opening the way to another sign that is bigger than that, and another sign that is bigger than that, until things are calibrated. So this is a stepping stone to something else, the inevitable that will come. Whether the entire Palestine is taken over by the Israelis and it's called the state of Israel altogether, whether they build the temple of Solomon, whether all the Jews of the world come and live in it, where all the Palestinians are exiled out of it, whatever is, can, all of this can happen, brothers and sisters. All of this can happen. Everything, uh -huh. there's nothing that the scholars have indicated right now that is anything major except what we are seeing. But they are a stepping stone to something else.
So the inevitable is coming. The inevitable is coming. Brothers and sisters, in the past, Allah SWT gives us examples of great civilizations and empires that reached great heights. Alaw fil ard, meaning in their arrogance. Their arrogance reached heights and there to the point where Pharaoh says, I don't know any other God but me among you. Isn't that true? Allah says, and such are the ways that we replace days in, in exchange for other days. Yeah, and new generations come, new empires come, new powers replace other powers. Nothing ever stays. In fact, the Rasul did say towards the end of time, The hadith is in Sahih Muslim. You will have a peaceful pact, an allegiance together with the Romans. In those days, the Rasul ﷺ called them Romans. Today, Allahu A'lam with the Romans are, but they are the descendants. You can say the Europeans, probably the British, maybe the Americans, maybe Australia, maybe, you know, all those types of people who their origins were from what used to be called the Byzantines or the Romans. Rasul Sallallahu said, you will have a peaceful pact with them together to fight a common enemy of yours. The hadith is in Sahih Muslim. It hasn't happened yet, but that's towards the end of time, before the Mahdi comes out. Before the Mahdi comes out, as, uh, as what the scholar said. And before Isa salam, and before the Dajjal. We all know who I'm talking about, we're Muslims. My brothers and sisters, a Jewish man asked me, why do you people wish Israel evil? The other day, he said to me, why do you wish Israel evil? And I found that question extremely strange that it's even being asked. Who said we wish Israel or Jews evil? Yani, under Islamic rule, under the Muslim rule, we, our Islamic empire, is known in history to be the only, only empire who ever gave the rights and peace to both Jews and Christians and other people of different religions in, under the Islamic rule, in Palestine, in Jerusalem and everywhere else. It's strange. Rasul Sallallahu said, for example, whoever wrongs a Mu'ahid, a non-Muslim living under Muslim rule, whoever harms them or wrongs them, detracts from him or takes from his rights or burdens him or her with more work than he is able to do, takes something from him without his consent, I will plead for him. Rasul Sallallahu said, I will plead for him, the non-Muslim, or I will be the opponent of the Muslim who wronged him on the day of resurrection. The hadith is in Abu Dawood. Uh, in Germany, the Jews were confined to concentration camps. The Germans under Hitler even massacred hundreds of thousands of them in gas chambers. But ironically, the descendants of those victims of the Holocaust now subject the Palestinian, Arabs, Christians and Muslims alike to ghettos and other grave oppressions just like what happened to them. And this person asked, why do you... In Christian West unjust, the Christian West unjustly relegated the Jewish people as a whole for something their ancestors did to the ghettos of Western cities. Palestinians, Palestinians are the only people, these poor Palestinians, the only people who did not take part in World War I and World War II. They're the only people who did nothing of violence, who welcomed the Jewish people from around the world to come back. And of course, there were some already in Palestine welcomed them and lived with them in harmony. And they're the only ones who they persecute now as if they are the ones who caused these harm to them. In pre-1917, 1948, Jews, Christians and Muslims lived harmoniously and peacefully, neighbor to neighbor, face to face. Everybody worshipped and was happy for centuries in Palestine. Post-1948, however, Israel uprooted the Palestinians killed them, massacred them, destroyed them, persecuted them, made an apartheid, did ethnic cleansing, threw them out of their homes, stole their homes, stole their lands, caused them to be in Gaza in an open prison before, before Hamas came out, even before, for 75 years. And now a genocide is happening, ethnic cleansing in every name of the word, against all international law, against the UN resolutions. And then the, and this person asks me, why do you guys hate Israel or want evil on Israel? SubhanAllah, we don't want evil on Israel. We don't want evil on Jews. We don't want evil on Christians. Islam doesn't want evil on anybody. We want goodness for everybody. 
Rahmatan lil alameen, Allah said, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is a mercy to mankind. Give us a chance to help you and advise you. To, we want you to be guided to the Islam, but not through violence. However, with all this, a person asks me, why do you want evil? We hate injustice. We hate injustice. And Allah hates injustice.